the use of antibiotics has caused more problems than has solved. The documentary will explore a series of arguments in regards to antibiotics and antibiotic resistant harmful bacteria, also known as superbugs. The first third of the body, I will provide the background and history of the use and misuse of antibiotics. This will include many scientific and societal aspects. The history of the body will be about how the use of antibiotics has not caused more problems than has solved. This will be supported by three arguments. The first scene will explain the method of how the first category of antibiotics destroys the first type of antibiotics. The second scene of will explain the method of how the second category of antibiotics destroys the second type of antibiotics. The third scene will be will be about how the use of antibiotics has allowed paramedics to treat and save the lives of patients that have been in an accident. The third of the body will be about how the use of antibiotics has caused more problems than it has solved. This will be supported with five persuasive arguments. One, a method in which harmful bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics. Two, the reason why patients do not take the right amount of antibiotics when they are infected with a harmful bacterium. Three, the reasons why bacterial infected patients living in developing countries will have a higher chance of not surviving. Four, the reason why doctors are forced to administer antibiotics to patients even though it isn't necessary. Five, the reason why the use of antibiotics destroys beneficial bacteria that are living inside humans, leading to them to become sicker. An antibiotic is a medication that is given to a patient that is infected with a harmful bacteria. The antibiotic will then destroy the harmful bacteria, resulting in the patient to become well again. A superbug is when a harmful bacterium, such as Staphylococcus aureus, is resistant to many antibiotics. researcher named Alexander Fleming had a lid open that contained harmful bacteria in petri dishes. This led to unknown fungus from outside to kill all of the bacteria in the petri dishes. This unknown fungus was named Penicillin metatatum. This fungus became the key ingredient for the first antibiotic called penicillin. In 1942, 114 victims from the coconut grove fire suffered serious burns and were affected with staphylococcus. The victims were not expected to survive. When penicillin was administered, the victims recovered well from their injuries. The use of penicillin resulted in people to develop wrong assumptions. Such assumptions were that penicillin could cure a person with cancer. This led to products such as beverages to be produced that contained penicillin. People infected with staphylococci were constantly misused the penicillin tablets. This resulted in staphylococci to develop a penicillin resistant gene. This can be shown as the amount of penicillin-resistant staphylococci moved from 14% in 1946 to 59% in 1950. This was what Fleming had exactly predicted. He said that bacterial-infected patients would misuse antibiotics which will result in harmful bacteria to develop antibiotic-resistant genes. When antibiotic-resistant harmful bacteria spreads to other people, this would lead to the disease pandemic. When penicillin is absorbed by the patient, it tracks the harmful bacteria that appear crystal violet when it undergoes a test. Penicillin destroys this type of bacteria by destroying the bacteria's cell wall. When gentamicin is absorbed by the patient, it tracks the harmful bacteria that appear crystal red when it undergoes a test. Gentamicin destroys this type of bacteria by severely altering the bacteria's proteins. The creation of different antibiotics has greatly supported paramedics in treating patients. It has allowed patients to be stable enough to go to the hospital to receive further treatment and survive. This process first starts off when a virus that is controlled by a bacterium inserts its DNA into an antibiotic resistant healthy bacterium. The DNA virus replicates and the chromosome of the healthy bacterium disintegrates. The chromosome contains the antibiotic resistant gene and is now absorbed by the virus. The virus injects the chromosome into the harmful bacterium, resulting it to become a superbug. Patients constantly ignore the doctor's advice on when to take antibiotics. Also, bacterial infected patients do not consume all of the prescribed antibiotics. 
This results in harmful bacteria in patients to develop an antibiotic resistant gene. The family members and friends of the patient follow this practice as well. This results in the harmful bacteria such as Staphylococcus aureus in patients a higher chance to develop an antibiotic resistant gene. The use of antibiotics destroys beneficial bacteria such as Helicobacter pylori, which is essential for our immune system defense. If 100 patients take an antibiotic called amoxicillin, then 20 to 50 of the patients will have the Helicobacter pylori destroyed inside of them. The loss of this beneficial bacterium results in patients to become more likely in being affected with osteophilic cancer, etc. This can lead to the death of patients. There are many facts that have been written in scientific articles such as Scientific American websites and books that strongly support one topic. The topic is based on the overuse of antibiotics which has greatly contributed to the creation of superbugs. This has been backed up with scientific evidence starting with the creation of the antibiotic called penicillin. For the historical scientific basis of how antibiotics has caused more problems than it has created, the use of leeches was a wrong method in treating bacterial infected patients in the past. Fleming had a prediction that people would misuse penicillin, which would lead to a disease pandemic. For the historical scientific basis of how antibiotics has not caused more problems than it has created, Fleming discovered the main ingredient in making penicillin, which was penicillin notatatum in 1928. For the historical societal basis of how antibiotics has caused more problems than it has created. In the past, only rich people survived the disease pandemic. Originally, penicillin was added to drinks. People thought that drinking it would cure all the ailments inside of them. The amount of penicillin resistant staphylococci grew from 14% in 1946 to 59% in 1950. For the historical societal basis of how antibiotics has not caused more problems than it has created, this documentary implies that antibiotics have saved many lives during 1942. The second third of the body is about how the use of antibiotics has not caused more problems than it has solved. This will be supported with three persuasive arguments supporting this fact. The first two arguments reveal that there are two types of antibiotics that destroy different types of antibiotics using different methods. The third argument shows that the creation of many antibiotics has allowed paramedics to administer the correct drugs to patients that have been in an accident. The last third of the body is about how the use of antibiotics has caused more problems than has solved. This is supported with five persuasive arguments sustaining this fact. The first argument suggests that a method in which a harmful bacterium requires antibiotic resistant genes. The second and third of the argument suggests how human negligence results in harmful bacterium to acquire antibiotic resistant genes. The fourth argument clearly shows that the use of antibiotics destroys beneficial bacteria such as Helicobacter pylori. This argument also reveals the consequences of this. The fifth argument indicates that superbug infected patients living in developing countries have a slim chance of surviving. The reason is due to a lack of resources for the patients to receive quality of care and treatment. Methods used to stop the creation of more superbugs and to prevent more patients from being killed as a result is to follow the doctor's advice when taking antibiotics. You will also need more pharmaceutical companies developing new effective antibiotics that are relatively cheap. The third method is by having wealthy nations donating more resources to poor countries affected by superbugs.